thank you all for coming. Uh, interim head coach Don Treadwell is joined by senior quarterback Nick Holly. Let's start with uh, an opening statement and we'll open it up to questions. Coach? Well, you know, as we talked a little bit earlier today with the MAC office, you know, coming off the first game, it was nice to get that one up and under our belt. I think there's always a lot of great anticipation, both as coaches and players, to kind of have that first opportunity to kind of practice what you've been doing for almost three plus weeks and actually try it out against another opponent. And needless to say, the opponent we played against was very capable. And uh, I think for those expectations that most people had, I think certainly we played a tremendous team. So that wasn't a surprise. The thing we take away from that is, you know, our young men were very competitive. And you're always looking for things on the film post game to evaluate those things that the young men are expected to do. And we saw a lot of good things in that regard as far as the young men on assignments, technique, sound, playing with low pad level. There's a, you know, a handful of things that our head coach keeps reminding our players and coaches alike to do. And those are the things that we're evaluating. We'll, we've learned from this one. We'll put it behind us, and we're anxious to move forward on to Howard. Nick, can you talk about, well, I know that not much on the game as much, but what was that feeling coming out of that tunnel in that valley? And you see they're the defending champions. And I know it's you're the opposition, but did, did that fire you guys up just a little bit more, saying we're facing the, defend, we're facing the defending national champions? And you see all that on television, but you're in there... Yeah, uh, I mean, I can't speak for the other guys, but I, I would say for myself, uh, it was like every other game. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a cool atmosphere, and if you don't get juiced up to play in that atmosphere, then something's got to be wrong with you. But uh, to to go into Death Valley and have all those fans and to be playing the national champions, it was an opportunity, and uh, it was a, a initially a great experience to you know have that opportunity. Uh, but yeah, if I mean, if you don't get juiced up for that, you you shouldn't be playing the sport. Did you see Howard's rocks? Uh, no. Uh, one thing though, was the game plan you tried to do is like you did last year, trying to use the run because I I believe you only passed four times. Did they throw anything different defensively, or was it just that was the only way we could move the football is to run the football? Well, I don't handle the game plan. That's no, up to that, I mean, yeah. It seemed because you, uh, I know that most last year was a lot of the running, the option running against the great defense. But can you talk about that? Uh, I mean, there's not, I don't really have a comment on that. That's, okay. that's more Coach Treadwell than, mean, than me. I apologize, Coach. Any other? Uh, just, I mean, Nick, you haven't taken a pop since last year into last year. Just how does it feel to get back in there and get a couple hits? And uh, well, the first, the first hit I had, I, I, I came off sideline. I said, finally, finally feels good to get hit, uh, as, as much as it's kind of weird to say. But uh, I was glad everything held up good. It felt fine. Uh, and I was happy with the results. And uh, I don't know if I missed the, the soreness from, you know, getting hit. But, uh, I mean, I enjoy playing, and, and I love playing. So it was, it was good to, to finally get that chance and to get the reins let off and, and to go. Coach, was there anybody defensively that stood out uh, in the way they played? I know there were a couple of pictures online. Uh, Barr had a couple of tackles that were, were posted. Were there any others that uh, caught your eye that played well? Regarding our side of the Our side of the football. Yeah, well, certainly I think that's one name that stood out when you listen to the defensive coaches talk. Uh, you know, Matt Barr, ironically similar to the gentleman sitting next to me, in terms of Nick, having Nick on offense and Matt Barr on defense is like having an extension of your football staff on the field, which you can't put a price tag on that. That's tremendous. I mean, Matt Barr, he knows how to line them up against every look. He studies the game. He and Nick are, you know, they study the game like any great players do because there's more to it than just showing up on game day. And therefore, it's not surprising to see Matt Barr, you know, leading in tackles and doing the things he did because he brings all of that in his preparation before the game. Now it's on to Howard. Both of you, I've heard. Uh, you probably heard what happened late Saturday night, coming one of the biggest upsets, 48-45. Uh, Coach London came from Virginia. Uh, anything you can see from the Bison 
have you had a chance to look at the Bison offensively or defensively yet, Coach? Yeah, we've taken a peek at them, certainly. You know, we try to move past the last game, you know, usually through Sunday and then try to get a little bit of an idea of the next opponent, probably Sunday evening and certainly through the day on Monday. And I think one of the things that jumps out on both sides of the ball is you see a lot of team speed, you know, a lot of team skill. You know, offensively, they spread you out, move around. Needless to say, I think, as you guys know, their quarterback seems to be the you know, leader of their offense in terms of how productive they are. And then from my perspective as an offensive coach, when you turn on the tape and watch them defensively, you see a lot of guys flying to the ball with good speed, and they get off blocks well. Just backtracking real quick to Clemson, who did you see offensively? Anybody in particular on the film that stood out? You know, collectively, you know, there's some things that uh, when we go back at each position, you know, you draw from because there's some things up front at the O line that, of course, they're always going to be a source of point of emphasis because things go as the offensive line does. And there were some good one on one battles in there. And the things that we did well, we're going to continue to build upon. And some of the unique things that uh, we learn from the game experience will improve upon. And I think, as most of you know, at the end of the day, no matter what team you are, typically there's a lot of neat uh, you know, movement in terms of positive things happening from game one to game two. Just because there's that first game under your belt, we've done that, okay, now it's another opponent, and you start to get a little bit of a rhythm. I mean, did you go in, uh, obviously, completely understand the, the – Philosophy to stay on the ground. I mean, did you go in thinking we we're going to throw a very limited number, or did, is that just kind of what happened? I know you didn't throw a single pass in the first half. Kind of a combination. I think certainly, as we've talked all along, to be quite honest, with what we do and how we do it, running is the emphasis. And then we kind of, you know, evaluate things as we go. And, uh, you know, we're always bouncing things off our boss as we go forward and making sure we mesh with his overall plan and we keep moving forward and whatever he asks us to do, and, you know, we'll do it to the best of our ability. What did, I'm, I'm assuming you spoke with Paul. Did, can you kind of say what he – I mean, I can't say exactly what he talked about. Just kind of his general thoughts on the game and anything he had to say as far as that one. Oh, you know, most of those things I would say will be more, I think, better when he returns and let you guys ask him because I don't want to misquote him on something because my mind is on Howard, to be quite honest. And I've kind of let the last game go behind. And to be honest, I'm probably more aware of actually what's going on in the future than I am in the past. When you face a team – that has a lot of speed, as you said. Is it? Do you try to? How do you, in a better word, to try and slow them down, especially on the offensive side of the football, and also on the defense? How do you? Is there a way, without giving out too much, is to how to slow them down? How to slow down a quick team, a fast team? Well, I can't speak for the defense, but one other simple answer to that is: the longer we have the ball, the less they have the ball. Nick is a player, I'm not saying you guys would overlook these guys no matter what happened last week, but seeing how what did happen last week, does it kind of help you guys really think, okay, we got to roll here? <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah, based on our results and their results, uh, there's extra motivation. Uh, you know, it's just, I, I give an example for and when he said, that for how do you slow a team down like that? And what Coach Treadwell said with their defense flies to the ball, that reminds me of uh, NC. Or NC, NC and yeah, and and their defense to me was on, as an offensive player, I respected them the most because they just every one of them flew to the ball. Every one of you could tell they played the game the right way. They they had the desire, they had the passion, and I think uh, I haven't had the chance. I'm gonna go watch the film after we get done talking here, but uh, by what he just said is is that represents to me what their defense is gonna be like, and and that's dangerous. And uh, so I think as a collective group when you have a team that just got off of upset not only do they believe but they're they're together and and that's going to be a challenge so uh if you don't come into this week you know with your your ears pinned back and ready to go then it's not going to be good so uh i think it gives extra motivation to to see what they did and and to, to watch what their tendencies are and to try to improve on our stuff and try to get a, a win also nice playing at home. Oh, yeah. I mean, it'll be the first time on the new turf, so uh, that'll be exciting. We haven't we haven't played much on that yet. Uh, but, I mean, hopefully we can build an atmosphere here and, and you know, create something and, and start building a program. So uh, it's exciting to, to get.
get that opportunity to be home. One last one, just how did you come out injury-wise overall? You know, I feel like we came out okay. I don't have all the specifics, but I'm not aware of anyone that we lost that won't be ready for the next game. I was just curious. I know you guys have gotten some guys from Atlanta recruiting-wise. Did you ever look at – did you ever come up on the radar when you guys were down there? You know, you look at a lot of guys. We're pretty much aware in today's technology with recruiting, there's not too many guys that, you know, get swept under the rug that you're not aware of. And, and as you kind of mentioned, because we have recruited in certain areas, there's a lot of other resources available other than the standard what you get through huddle, which is big nowadays, and things of that nature. So, yeah, you know, everybody's aware of different guys for the most part. From, the, from my perspective, it's, I know his measurables aren't great. Um, you know, Nick went through the same type of thing as far as football ability, but you just the size thing so big today. Obviously, he ends up at Howard. It's really surprising to, to see that. Um, from my perspective, what do you think as far as that one? Oh, I'm not surprised. You know, there's a lot of factors that aren't always brought to the light in the media, you know, that you might find different things that different people are either looking for or different things happen along the way that it just works itself out, you know, sometimes in a very positive way. And some young men, quite honestly, in a positive way, haven't reached their full potential. So all of a sudden they get to the next level and they're at constant training table, they're in lifting, they're in running, they're competing against upperclassmen that, you know, already know how it's supposed to be done. And if all of a sudden their game continues to rise, then you get a nice present, you know, pleasant surprise as well. <clears throat> Anything you see kind of as a key coming into this game from your perspective? Maybe just go offense. Obviously, that's what you know. Well, kind of like we talked about, I think, earlier, as we mentioned, coming out of Clemson, there's certain things that we're going to continue to do on our offense, and the whole focus is to do it better and better each week. And the type of offense we have, that's typically the case as you stay the course and just fine-tune, you know, little few things here and there, technique-wise, schematically. And uh, it tends to, like I say, it's a rhythm to it that we anticipate, you know, continuing to get better with what we're doing. Any particular reason you went with two different quarterbacks last game? No, we had already made that decision going into it that we would, you know, and that has served us well if you look at our most recent history there. So we want to keep guys game ready as we keep moving forward. Holly, you talked about, you know, obviously not missing being sore, but it's, you know, it's Monday, now it's mid-season. You talk about just the feeling of now you're in it. You know what I mean? It's, it's just, this is the first Monday for week two. Uh, it's just a reminder, basically, uh, of, of what it feels like to be a football player and, and to go give your body up for, for the game. Uh, but, I mean, it's exciting. Uh, this is my last one, and, and uh, I hope that, you know, things, things go well. And, and I think that uh, with the guys that we have and when, when things start to click that we can have a special season. So uh, it's just exciting to – basically be in season now. It's it's a long off season. It's a lot of work. So uh, this is when we get to finally play and to show what we can do. Coach, can you talk about Derek Adams uh, just a little bit? He was named uh, Mackey Special Teams Player of the Week. Um, and it looked like he even threw in a new uh, rugby style punt once in a while there on Saturday. Well, certainly, uh, you know, I can't totally explain everything. Coach Spencer kind of is in charge of that particular part of the game. But certainly from what he did, it's not surprising. Nick, I'm sure, would reaffirm that if you talk about hard workers, a young man that's out there day after day when there's no one else out there and he's working on his game. And then it also, in my opinion, showed his flexibility. And you kind of just touched on that. You know, there's the standard punt, receive it, take a step or two and punt it. And there's the rugby. There's a lot of punters that can't do both. So his valuable, you know, Ability to do both of those, you know, really makes him a weapon, and that was demonstrated a little bit in the last game. Anything else? We're good. All right. Thank you, Thank All you right gentlemen. Then.